Hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and uh, today is the uh, the first layout update of uh, 2015. I've been doing a, a couple of bits and pieces over Christmas and I've got a couple of uh, new arrivals as well so uh, I'll take a look at those and uh, I'll also go into the uh, projects and bits and pieces that I would like to have accomplished uh, by the end of this year. I hope you all had a, uh, a good Christmas and uh, a good new year. It's, uh, it's a bit late, I know. I had uh, planned on getting a video uh, uploaded a bit sooner than this, but uh, I've been working on the, uh, the station building quite a lot, and I sort of got a bit involved. I wanted to try and get as much done as I could. Uh, I, I hate this building, uh, to be brutally honest. Um, not from an aesthetic point of view. Um, the problem is the amount of space that I have is very small, um, and what the station needs to do is I wouldn't say unusual, but it's a bit different. Um, usually, you know, you have a station building adjacent to a platform on the same level, um, or the station is uh, off to one side, and uh, there'll be steps going down. Instead, the station is directly over the running lines with the uh, stairs going down. So it is quite difficult to sort of build it and work out what's going to look good and how to make the area sort of look interesting. So I've been working on it for quite a lot and uh, what you see here is probably only about, I'd say about 70% complete. There's still a fair bit left to do on it. Um, but I think it's a lot better than it was and I'm going to keep working on it until it's, uh, until it's looking much better. So uh, what I did was I ripped off the old uh, the old sort of buildings that had the stairs in them. Um, it, did, it, it didn't work. Um, I was never really very happy with the way it looked and again it's part of this uh, area being difficult to fill. Uh, so I ripped them off and uh, what I did was I, I put the escalators closer together. You can see down there. I put the escalators closer together so I made the overall structure a lot narrower which allows people to walk by either side which I'll come on to in a minute. Um, and then I built like a little canopy over the top, as you can see there. And uh, I've done uh, the window frames. Again, the, the back section here has been rebuilt. Um, done a bit of painting and stuff. Around the front, it's looking a bit better. I still haven't done the doors. Um, I painted the, uh, the floor. And I added some girder section along the back here. Again, that needs to be weathered and rusted up. Uh, the brickwork's all been painted, um, so it's it's now quite dull in colour. Um, it does need some weathering; it's a bit pristine. Uh, I've done the little network southeast uh, stripes around the top; uh, they're just painted on. Uh, so around here um, will be a big network southeast logo or a Everard Junction logo. I haven't quite decided yet. And then I've got various posters and things that I'm going to put up on the station, and then I'd like to add some sort of interior to it. Um, there'll be lighting of course um, and then finally get the roof done so there's still a lot left to do but I have managed to do quite a lot and I think it looks a lot better um, it certainly fills the gap a lot better uh, so leading on from this what I'll be doing is uh, down here in the bottom on both both sides um, this wall again this was built years ago and it's sort of a temporary thing um, and then we've got a bit of retaining wall in there, but you can see the cardboard and stuff and again You can see that that's a temporary thing um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the platforms underneath here um, They won't be functional as such, but they'll just make it look like the station does actually go underground so uh, The platforms will go under so this wall will sort of terminate somewhere and the platform will go in um, and with the platforms going in, then that, that then sort of justifies um, the escalators with the gaps either side to allow people to walk past so they can actually get underneath um, the uh, station. And I'll be doing the same thing over there. And then when trains are parked in here, it'll look a bit more convincing and I think the whole area will just sort of improve in terms of its look. And uh, hopefully um, that'll finally get finished. I'll also be doing plenty of work along the, uh, the platforms, all the station uh, paraphernalia and furniture and as well as people um, will be added. Um, it's basically this year the station area is going to be a major area of focus. Um, I've spent the last year or two mainly on that side of the layout. I know I still need to finish the scrapyard, that's uh, also something that's going to be worked on this year. Um, finally got something in the corner in 2014 with the suburb scene over there. 
still being worked on as we go. Um, but overall, what I'm doing is I'm slowly working my way around. Um, again, you can remember last year I did a fair bit of work in this TMD. So moving down to here, again, this is all bare. The platforms need weathering and the canopies need weathering and there needs to be lights and all sorts added. So this will be a major area of focus uh, in 2015 and hopefully um, it'll be pretty much complete by the end of it. Off the back of that obviously is the town scene and again it's going to be another area of focus this year. I've added some more details to it and stuff which you saw in a video I did last year. Um, but uh, again I need to crack on and just add all those little bits and pieces that make it look nice and convincing. It's pretty good already but there's still a lot left to do. Uh, just quickly, something I did very recently, uh, I just painted the uh, cork that was along here and um, you remember it was looking quite uh, quite bright and in your face so that's now nicely toned down. I need to glue the people back and uh, somebody also mentioned it would be a good idea to put some uh, curb stones right at the edge to prevent the gravel falling into the water. Uh, that's a good idea so I'll be doing that and uh, I also need to get, uh, get my hands on a boat um, but again that will uh, that'll get done at some point. Uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is I have finished all of the uh, the scrap wagons. These uh, these took a long time. I've got bad memories of making all these flipping cubes, but uh, I'm glad they're done, and they do look very good. And let's uh, bring a few, bring them back a little bit. Put that in there. I uh, put it into the light. You can see all the rust effects that I've done to it. They're all pretty much the same, but they do look good. So uh, I finally have a nice scrap train will lay out. I've probably had the wagons about a year, probably more than a year to be honest, so it's good to finally have them on the layout and running. I'll just stop the uh, trains briefly just so I can show you the, uh, the Christmas arrivals. Um, I didn't ask for too much this year. Uh, well, I say I didn't ask for too much. Um, it isn't too much, but uh, it's quite expensive. Um, I needed uh, another rake of uh, Mark III coaches because uh, I plan on buying the uh, the uh, Intercity um, Executive Livery HST that Hornby have planned for release um, sometime in the uh, the first quarter of this year. Um, now uh, the coaches they usually sell out pretty quickly so um, I asked for those for Christmas and uh, luckily uh, that's what I got so I have another complete rake of um, HST coaches um, another one of the reasons why I built the fiddle yard down here was so I could have capacity to store an additional HST I think two HSTs running together you know one, one going this way one coming the other way flying through the station that'll look really good so uh, I'll just quickly show you the coaches and uh, then I'll continue with the update. Okay, so these are these are the new ones. Um, Hornby uh, have got quite a couple, quite a lot of Mark III's um, that have come out um, quite recently. You've got the uh, the Midland Mainline ones. Uh, there's uh, the these ones, the uh, Intercity Executive ones. Um, you've also got various versions of the uh, Blue and Grey. Um, there's uh, the uh, Arriva ones that have come out. Um, they've announced they're going to be doing the um, East Coast ones, uh, which were previously a limited edition. Um, so they're doing a good job of uh, getting the Mark III's out there because they were previously quite difficult to get hold of. And uh, usually uh, you had to resort uh, to places like eBay, uh, which was where I got uh, the, uh, the previous rake. Uh, so the, the main differences um, between the two rakes is these ones are slightly earlier because you have Intercity 125. And the ones I had previously, you have the Intercity Swallow Star with its in italics. Um, both were seen at the same time for a number of years, um, so there's no problem uh, running them together. Uh, it was quite common. And apart from that, they are visually pretty much the same. There are very, very little difference between them. So there's the, uh, the new rake. Uh, it's a seven car rake which is quite typical for the western region during the uh, late 1980s and uh, quite pleased with it. Um, nothing particularly special about the Mark III's. These ones don't have lighting. Um, the only ones they seem to have announced or released with the lighting um, are the uh, blue and grey ones. Um, that's okay, I can fit my own lighting at a later date as I did with this one down here. Um, 
And apart from that, they are pretty much the same as they were 10, 15 years ago. Um, they have added a few bits of paint here and there to try and tie them up a little bit, make them look a bit better. So for example, we've got this uh, interesting uh, painting arrangement on the, uh, the ends. Uh, I think the white bit around the edge you can see there, that's on all of them. I think that is an attempt to represent um, the asbestos uh, rubbing plate. They had like a, a rubbing plate for bashing into each other um, and that plate could then be removed when it got too worn and be replaced and they were originally that sort of colour um, but over the time they were used they pretty much ended up blending into the rest of it and going back to black. Um, the ends, the coach ends and doors you can see down there, doors are painted white um, that may be fine for uh, blue and grey, but I'm pretty sure when they were in this colour and subsequent liveries they were either yellow or red. Um, so that's something I may address, I may not, uh, depends if I can be bothered or not. Um, unfortunately still got the same rubbish coupling system, so the, uh, the massive couplings. Um, they did uh, go to sort of some slightly narrower ones as you can see on this example, but at the moment they're back to the massive couplings. Um, that's basically to keep them the same as the power car. Um, my biggest gripe with Mark III's is to close couple them. You can see the gap between them is absolutely ridiculously huge. Um, again, something you can address by buying specialist coupling stuff. I think Keen Systems make a, a couple of designs for coupling these together really closely, but uh, for the moment I will just leave them as they are. Um, they look good and uh, it's nice to have another rake. My only major gripe with them, um, and this may affect you if you have bought um, some of the uh, recently released ones, um, I know this is on the executive livery ones and the uh, middle and mainline ones. Uh, I cannot confirm if it's on the uh, blue and grey ones because their release pattern has been somewhat more patchy. Um, They've been released in greater quantities and more often, so they brought some out last year and then there were a couple later on and now there's some more again um, with the uh, release of the, these ones and various other colours. Um, but the problem is, on the restaurant car, the buffet car, um, I believe it may have been retooled. Um, it's been retooled to the same standard as all the others, so I can only assume that the tool or the mould um, became damaged or for whatever reason needed to be replaced, maybe it had reached the end of its working life. Um, but during the retooling process they have completely missed off all of the catering roof vents. You can see the uh, roof is completely smooth. If we come over to an older release, you can see the vents there. It should have those. All Mark III catering vehicles have those vents. It's necessary for the equipment that is inside them. Um, that's a real shame. Um, I can probably make it out of plastic card, um, but I shouldn't have to. These are 25 quid each, and I'm sure they'll only become more and more expensive as time goes on. Uh, so to completely miss off quite an important piece of detail on a coach that doesn't have much detail um, is quite a blow. Um, it's not a deal breaker for me, I can sort it out if I really want to, um, but I thought I would point it out as it's not really obvious um, when you're going to buy them. Um, so if you are planning on getting the middle and mainline ones, the executive ones, or the, uh, the it's possible that the latest uh, blue-grey ones have got it as well, um, it is possible that they have completely missed off the roof vents for the catering vehicle. Um, again, not a deal breaker for me, but I thought I would make you aware um, because it's not easy to notice if you haven't already bought them. So going back to the station, if we stand over here, you can see the sort of the sort of thing I'm going for. I think the station is looking better. I think the building looks a lot better than it did previously. Those two buildings that I had sort of had attached to it that had the escalators in, it just didn't work for me. But as I said, it's a difficult spot to fill, so. Hopefully, we'll get there in the end, but uh, it's looking alright so far. Uh, something else I'll also be doing in the near future is getting the, uh, the back scene installed. The back scene will be running all the way along here. I've already purchased it, it's downstairs in the tube, but uh, I'm waiting for uh, a day or two where the weather is not warm, but just a bit warmer, so it's going to make things a little bit, a little bit easier for me. Um, hanging a back scene is something I've not done before, so uh, it'll uh, be an interesting experience, but uh, I think 
that will make quite a difference to the overall look of the layout, uh, certainly in this location. I don't see this area changing too much um, this year, um, but uh, it, it's certainly on the list for things to be done. Um, that's probably going to be the, the 2016 sort of attack. Um, so 2015, I'd really like to get the station sorted out. I'd really like to get the town scene a bit better detailed than it already is, so that I've sort of got a good standard of work all the way along from the town scene, the station. I've already done the work here, but again, more little bits and pieces will probably be added. Um, get the suburb scene finished and then all of that is all done and all finished including the canal scene so um, I, as you can see I'm working my way around so I don't I don't see me doing much work in this area this year um, but I, I think next year that's probably where uh, things will change um, this area looks fine for now to be honest uh, there are there are things that need to be done um, the street lights or the yard lights they really do need to be painted um, I could do with a back scene um, I need to uh, sort out underneath over there because at the moment it's very obvious that the trains are just going onto baseboard. There's no illusion of a tunnel. Um, again, there's no detail around the back of the shed or anything. Uh, bits and pieces need to be done along here. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done, but it's not on the list at the moment. It's, uh, it's just going to be put on hold until I've got uh, the rest of the layout complete. Another job I'd like to, uh, to get done um, this year is the, uh, the signalling, which is what I mentioned in the, uh, in the previous update. Um, I'm in the process of filming the how-to video for how I do the, uh, the automatic signalling detection stuff. And uh, there's a lot of signals that need to be put on the layout, um, as you've seen previously. I've got those two gantries, so one of them will be, one of them will be going there. There'll be another one around the other side of the layout. Um, there's various other signals that need to go in because at the moment I haven't really got very many at all and then I need to look into ground signals and all that kind of stuff um, and again I sort of put it off a little bit this year I just didn't really feel like doing it so uh, it'll be done but uh, just got to get it done so that's pretty much it for the moment for this update um, as I said plenty of stuff planned for uh, 2015 particularly in this area um, I'll be working on the, uh, the station building again over the uh, coming days and hopefully that will be finished in a, in a week or two. Um, so I'll do a video when that's finished. Um, in terms of rolling stock, there's not too much on the horizon that uh, I'm after. Um, most of the stuff that I have wanted for the layout I, I now have, uh, fortunately. Um, there are things like DMUs and stuff and there's always the odd wagon or two. But, uh, and of course the, uh, the aircon coaches, um, which I desperately need. Uh, just waiting for Backman uh, to uh, to bring the uh, Mark II Fs out. I've had a look at the Hornby Mark II Es. Uh, they are all right, but to be honest, they're not anywhere near as good as they should have been. Um, there are a number of issues with them, and I'm not going to go into them on this video. Um, but there are several things wrong with them. They're fixable. I just can't be bothered to fix them. I'd rather just wait for some better coaches to come out. They may be more expensive, but I'm willing to pay the price if they are a superior product. So I'll leave you with some uh, shots of the trains running. Uh, got a fair bit of stuff running today. Had quite a good uh, running session this afternoon. Uh, so I'll show you um, some clips and stuff that I've got of that and uh, some clips I'll take in a minute. Um, so as I say, next video will uh, probably be the, uh, the signaling tutorial or part uh, three for the uh, the suburb scene detailing over there in the corner. Um, eventually when I get the station building finished, as I say, in a couple of weeks hopefully that will be done. Um, I'll do a video when that's complete because uh, that will be quite a milestone for me. That's uh, been a real tricky area, tricky little project to do. Um, so I'll be happy when that's done. And then uh, I'll do a video series um, when I uh, move on to detailing and sorting out the, uh, the main station area.